Okay, hello guys. Uh, today we're going to be talking about um, element and principle of design. So I have uploaded the what you call slide, okay, on element and principle of design in our ODL system. So please have a look at it. Well, if I were to share with you, hold on, I'm going to share with you um, on the notes, okay. Let me just share the screen here. All right. So if I share the screen, you will see. Um, this one here. Can you see the screen now? Right. So if you go to ODL system, you know, in topic seven, graphics and media design, uh, you will find notes about graphic and media design, element and principle of design here, okay? So this is what we're going to look into. Uh, other than that, please have a look at some of the videos I've posted here, okay? We have uh, bitmap versus vector graphics, so you have to know this. When we talk about graphic, uh, you need to establish the difference between bitmap and vector. That's quite important. Right, but uh, most importantly, before we get into that, um, meaning you have to watch the YouTube video I've posted, and um, now let's talk about elements and principle of design. So, in becoming a designer, this is the uh, basic of everything. Okay, so as you know, and I think you are aware, when you look around, you know, your surrounding, you can see uh, elements of design are actually everywhere. Okay. Uh, what do I mean by elements of design? There are seven. Um, the, the, the most popular one, the line, shape, uh, and then we have size, texture, color, value, you know, and uh, we're going to look into it uh, more later. So even a small one, like um, if you look at your pen, you know, you will see that, hey, there's an element of a line, perhaps, you know. Even you look at the fan design, kipas kan, okay. There's like a repetition of lines around it. So, kalau you tengok kat mana-mana pun sebenarnya, you will see uh, the elements and principle of design. So, maybe you can share with me more, where can you find all these elements, eh. Watch and shape, especially. If you combine, you know, all the big, a circle with a smaller circle when you combine like this it becomes a design okay and even for fashion example if you want to look slimmer you know you use line like upper horizontal ke vertical untuk nampak slimmer kan kalau you lebar you nak nampak macam lagi uh, apa ni slimmer you akan pakai line-line yang tegak okay so this all creates a, a optic illusion you know okay it helps with that and we have like size, size also plays important role. Um, and then texture, okay, texture akan bagi mood, okay. Rough texture, kalau you nak buat satu design yang lebih lembut, okay, what sort of texture you can play around with, like cottons and all that, it will resemble kelembutan, right. So texture is uh, part of the element of design, you have to understand. And then color, value, and so forth. Okay, so even value you nak nampakkan, uh, atau you nak bagi effect. Contohnya dalam satu layout design tu, you nak fokuskan uh, ruang yang tengah dengan information yang jelas. So maybe dekat keliling, for example, kita tengok kotak di sini. Eh, uh, around them, maybe gelap, and tengah-tengah tu kita bagi pencahayaan yang lebih jelas. Okay, so even lightness, darkness, value tu pun ada peranannya dalam design. So, all these elements memang memainkan peranan color. I don't have to explain, you know. You want it to be more cheerful, you give brighter colors, okay. Um, uh, you have to be sensitive with the choice of color as well uh, because it involves with a different culture in Malaysia, right. So, if you have, you know, I mean, if for Chinese, like black color is not a good luck color, right. So, uh, when you design something for certain culture, you have to take that into consideration. Eh? Okay, that's element. Now, when you look into principle of design, okay, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, around seven here. So, we have balance, movement, repetition, contrast, harmony, dominance, and unity. 
So when you do your design later, um, I'm going to use a lot of these words. And you need to understand when I say, hey, your design, you know, the balance is not there. It's not enough balance. So uh, you will know what I meant by that. And then uh, perhaps I would say, I like contrast, I've mentioned a lot in our previous uh, tutorial. Okay, I've mentioned especially when you are trying to give more contrast uh, to your phone with, you know, uh, background that is quite messy. So, macam mana nak bagi contrast to that font so people can read the font easily. Okay, with the messy background. So, that one I've explained before. Um, not only that, color contrast and ada banyak perkara lain lagi yang kita akan tengok sebentar lagi. And then we have harmony. Okay, what do you mean by a harmony design? Okay, apa beza pula harmony dengan unity? Okay, itu pun kita akan lihat. And we also going to talk about dominance. Okay. Kenapa perlu ada dominance dalam design? Okay. Right. So first thing first. Yang lain ni nanti kita akan bincangkan. I akan buat assignment sedikit. Uh, just not, not assignment. Activity between us. Okay. So first thing first. Uh, let's talk about balance. Dalam balance ni kita ada asymmetrical balance and symmetrical balance, okay? So, the first one ni, tengok ni symmetrical. When you talk about symmetrical balance, it is actually the type of balance where you can really sense that, you know, the left and right side are equal, okay? If you divide this into two, eh, I divide ni, tengah-tengah ni, okay? You bahagikan sebenar sebelah kanan ni pemberatan dia sama je dengan sebelah kiri. Okay, that is what it meant by symmetrical balance. Okay, this is an example of a layout that used symmetrical balance, right? Okay, we also have another one, asymmetrical balance. Um, asymmetrical balance ni, um, dia balance. Okay, it's just that at at a glance, you tengok macam, eh, macam tak balance. Tapi sebenarnya dia balance. How they uh, provide that balance, eh, for example, you nampak kat sini. Okay, you have a big bottle designed here dan nampak berat eh, on the right side of the layout. So, how are you going to provide balance on the left side? Okay, so um, you kena main dengan font yang lebih besar. You know, you play with like more colors on this side. So, in a way, it gives that balance feeling, okay? So, you dah nampak berat kat sini, you akan lebih do something with this side here. Same goes with another design here. You see, they already put a lot of macam design laptop here with the phone. So, it's, it's quite heavy on this side. So, how to balance out on the left side? They will put, you see, all the taxes on the left side here. Why not they put it here, kan? Nanti tak balance, nampak sebelah sini yang berat. So, they put it on the left side. So, this is what it meant by asymmetrical balance, okay? Another example of asymmetrical balance, um, as you can see here, right? Um, sini dah heavy with lots of Im uh, images, ada graphics, you know, ada orang tengah pegang iPad lah, okay? Dah berat. So, dekat sini tak banyak info pun. On the left side tak banyak info. But, you know, the black color box here, okay, dia memberi pemberatan. Okay. Even the dark color can really give you weight. Okay. Boleh bagi pemberatan weight. So the dark color make it looks heavier. Um, at therefore, walaupun tak banyak info, dia balancekan dengan on the right side yang banyak info dan gambar eh. For example. So ini yang kita namakan asymmetrical balance. You tengok kat sini pun samalah. Okay, ruangan ni mungkin lebih kosong. Sekiranya sini berat. You perlu masukkan uh, pemberatan on the atau information yang lebih on this uh, area eh. Okay. Right. So, when you talk about balance, tadi I dah cakap dengan balance. Okay, sekarang kita nak buat activity. So, I nak minta all of you just, you know, uh, video yourself. Okay, you captured yourself video and you upload in uh, ODL ni. So, kita nak tengok apa tu movement, repetition, contrast, harmony, dominance and unity. 
Okay, so ini I akan bagi into groups. I akan create one link of forum and put it inside uh, ODL ni. You can, you can click on the forum and uh, upload your understanding, okay, of what you mean by all this. Okay, I akan bagi into group. Right. Uh, sedikit tentang design tips. I've talked about uh, layout design last time kan. Uh, I've talked about uh, what not to do, what to do last time. So, kalau you dah nak start buat design nanti, uh, you need to first understand who is your target audience. Okay, how are you going to deliver uh, the message to your audience. Okay, macam kita nak buat redesign website sekolah ni, you have to put yourself as the parents. Eh? Siapa yang agaknya yang akan go to school website? Eh? Who are the people? So, you have to study and analyze that first. Okay, buat research sikit lah eh. Uh, what do they like? Normally, what would they look for in a school website? Okay, and what influences influence them to come to the end? come and, and link to the website. So you have to do a bit research on that first. Okay, um, and again, as I've mentioned, how to get idea, you memang have to brainstorm with your team. That's why for this first assignment, you need to work in group. Um, you have to refer to as many examples as possible. So, ni kerja-kerja designer lah, dia akan rujuk-rujuk designer yang sedia ada, uh, design-design yang sedia ada. Not necessary, you have to look into uh, educational website, you know. You can also refer to commercial website. Maybe other certain uh, features, you know, principle yang they use, you might want to apply that in the education website. Therefore, you can think a bit outside of the box lah, eh? rather than just producing the same, you know, kebanyakan uh, website pendidikan ni sama je rupa dia kan. So, if you want to uh, think outside of the box, uh, do browse into, you know, commercial website as well, okay? So, you need to benchmark lah. Nanti bila you brainstorm tu, uh, in a group, you have to benchmark, let's say, one or two website that you really want to produce something like it. Okay, you benchmark that website. And from there, kita akan start redesign uh, your, what do you call, uh, the, the, what, the school website yang I share with you in the course outline. Eh? Macam mana nak cari idea? Simple again to Mr. Google. Alright, you can always do Google. And then let's say you want to look for website design for kids. So as you can see that it's very colorful, you know. Uh, some berserabut, like I've said, bukan semua design perfect, okay. You have to keep on uh, improvising. If you think you like certain website, maybe you should sit down with your uh, friends and then try to criticize the website first. Apa agaknya ruang-ruang yang perlu diperbaiki. Okay, you can do that. Right, in your case, kita sekolah menengah kan? So, you carilah contoh-contoh website sekolah menengah. Tapi then again, as I said, uh, tak semestinya kena rujuk uh, website sekolah sahaja. Okay, untuk mendapatkan idea yang sedikit berbeza. Okay, ini contoh website for university nampak tak perbezaannya tu kan? Okay, satu macam very cheerful, colourful, you know. Another one is uh, quite serious when it comes to like. Because kerana target audience dia berbeza sedikit eh. Ya, uh, berbeza lah. Right, and um, we're going to talk about navigation tips sedikit. Memang dalam design kita ni tak ada pun menyentuh tentang you have to produce navigation sebab kita hanya menghasilkan design yang statik. Okay, tetapi nanti di semester-semester akan datang if you were to develop uh, a, a website, okay, so you need to take navigation into consideration. Okay, ada macam-macam jenis navigation sebenarnya. Okay, the first one is menu tree navigation. You know, dia macam tree. You bawa satu mouse pergi ke menu dia, you lalu kat situ, dia akan keluar, 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 keluar lagi banyak. Uh, what do you call? Cabang. Okay. So, that's uh, menu tree navigation. Ada juga tap stop. Dia tak macam tree tadi. Tree tu dia akan bercabang-cabang. Okay, tap stop ni macam... Pergi kat menu, dia akan keluar bawah macam ni. You see? So that's the tap stop. You can see tap stop in even Microsoft Word. You know, you go to home or layout, nanti dia keluar bawah tu. More features eh. So that's called tap stop. We have index navigation. Index navigation ni a bit messy. Macam catalog lah banyak guna. Index navigation with all the wordings. Okay. Uh, pull down menu navigation is like this, you know, you just pull down, 
okay um, menu to just pull down like that okay just like that I'm still okay with pull down but I really hate the three menu navigation just now karena you bawa your mouse and then pergi ke tepi kan you bawa your mouse nak click je dihilang you know it happens I really hate that one Okay, we also have iconic uh, navigation. So, ni banyak menggunakan image lah. Image-image ni sebagai button yang mana boleh navigate you to another page. Eh? Uh, banyak yang pakai iconic ni. Tapi, the thing is iconic, you need to use those yang uh, people use to. Kalau you nak guna icon-icon yang uh, apa ni audience tak biasa, you need to support it with taxes lah. Okay, macam contoh Land Rover ni punya website kan. Kalau you letak gambar kunci lah, kereta kat situ, people wouldn't know what is this menu about, you know. So, you have to put like um, taxes to support that uh, icon and um, recall button eh. Another one is page turning navigation. So, this one was used a lot masa back like five years back. Macam tu Puma pakai. Banyak-banyak website pakai. Cuma uh, this type of page turning navigation gunakan banyak um, what you call uh, berat. Paling berat. Okay. Dia banyak animation. So, uh, tak if you don't have a good computer so dia akan jadi macam quite heavy lambat nak loading eh jadi um, now yang kita banyak tengok macam ebook ni ada gunakan lah so where you can click and then the the page will turn to another page you know another one is actually meta for navigation uh, ni macam google map macam apa lagi tu yang you boleh navigate macam uh, street view kan uh, macam Let's say this is a website of a school, you know, you can have the school environment. So, parents can just bring their mouse and then lalu, gerakkan mouse tu, mouse tu akan tunjuk persekitaran sekolah, bilik guru, terutama contohnya eh. So, this is more like metaphor where, you know, um, user can feel the environment, the real environment, although they are not there lah. Okay. Uh, you can also combine the navigation, tak boleh lah, tak semestinya you nak satu saja. You can also be creative and com combine two navigation into one. Okay, when we talk about tips, font, typeface, ini I dah banyak kali cakap, last class. There's a difference between sans serif and serif. Okay, sans without serif, uh, dia punya ni tak ada extension from the a main body of the text, okay, as compared to serif here. And I've mentioned a lot of times, and serif is more suitable for an on screen design as compared to serif. Uh, the basis for into printing, eh? Okay, when you work with text, ni, you have to make sure be concise, not too many, dah banyak kali kata. Readable, okay, and you need to be consistent. Last time kan, I cakap jangan guna lebih dari three fonts, right? Even color on the fonts itself also important, okay? So consistency is very important. And I've also mentioned before, text ni ada macam-macam character. So it depends on your design. If you want like um, futuristic design, you can always Google and find, you know, futuristic type of design. If you want to work with like old, old English font, okay, you can also search that in Google. They provide a lot of uh, different types of old English font. Tapi janganlah guna ni untuk teks yang panjang eh. Wah, pening nak baca ni. Then we have cowboy for example, see? So tak payah fikir-fikir dah, you know, all this font designer dia dah buatkan dah for you. Eh? Okay. Um... Macam I kata, kita kena make our design as user friendly as possible. So, janganlah gunakan image-image atau icon button kalau benda tu memang tak tak bergerak atau tak memberikan navigation ke page yang lain. Kadang-kadang orang ingat macam klik-klik-klik ingat boleh pergi ke page yang lain sebenarnya tak boleh. So, avoid confusion okay, among your uh, viewer. Uh, combine if possible kalau you rasa visual tu sesuatu yang baru yang orang tak faham so you kena what you call that uh, beri penerangan dulu I, I give you an example macam you know design toilet um, 
Kalau zaman dulu-dulu kan it's quite messy dengan rambut lah eh. Kalau orang lelaki tu dengan topi lah, dengan you know, uh, pipe is a pipe lah, you know, it's quite complicated. Uh, at that time, maybe people don't understand, eh, what is this, you know, it's a toilet for male, female. So, you have to like, put explanation to it. But now, as time goes, you know, people dah faham dah what you mean by that. Okay? And even when, when I go to, you know, certain uh, toilet, they use this kind of symbol. That one there. Nampak tak? Okay. Ada orang macam tak faham apa benda simbol ni. Ha? Simbol apa ni? Kan yang bulat lepas tu pointed tu yang macam uh, simbol signs female male tu kan? Pening orang tengok. So, um, if you tend to use that kind of symbol or icon in your web page, you need to support it with uh, taxes eh? Atau penerangan. Okay, ni sama example, tengok macam design iPod last time eh, clean saja, very clean, use of different colors but with the uh, consistency on the uh, what you call human silhouette eh, hitam, so apa color pun yang dibuat pada layout-layout yang lain, uh, silhouette hitam tu still sama, still menggambarkan itu adalah iklan, uh, I, uh, apa iPod eh, iPod. Okay, so macam I kata, bila you pilih sesuatu image, memilih image ni sangat critical. Okay, you can be very sensitive, kat Malaysia ni ada macam-macam culture. So you must be sensitive with that, not to choose uh, the wrong ones. Okay, macam we had experience where we wish uh, happy typo sum. Okay, kita pakai image yang cahaya tu, that is not right. Okay, maybe, you know, sementara... Uh, Anita all can uh, correct me. Like that's not the image for type of some uh, festival, okay? So, again, macam designer ni pilih gambar kena betul-betul. Uh, lagi satu kalau you buat design website ke untuk sekolah di Malaysia. And then you letak gambar Mak Saleh and all this. So, uh, it doesn't relate, you know, lain lah kalau sekolah international kan? Okay, so that one also you have to consider, yeah? Okay. Tips on layout design yang ni ada cerita kan hari tu macam mana nak create balance uh, dalam layout. You know, you boleh guna A, X, C, B, D, Y, E, O. Okay. Uh, ni Z. Okay. Focal point kalau you nak bagi macam fokus atau nak bagi orang. Ingat tak cerita uh, business card yang I bagi tahu tu. So, you nak bagi direction eh kepada uh, viewer mana yang patut tengok dulu. You boleh guna rule of third ni. Eh. Kenapa roof of, uh, of third ni? Satu, dua, tiga. Satu, dua, tiga. So, you bagi satu section ni yang lebih dominant berdasarkan bahagian yang lain eh. Okay. Ni pun I dah terangkan semua. So, bila bercakap tentang consistency, kalau I comment design you nanti, eh, design you ni tak consistent, tak consistent. So, what do you mean by that? You know, kalau you uh, paparkan eh, satu corporate design, dia punya letterhead, uh, daripada dia punya surat ke, dia punya business card ke, dia punya uh, stationery ke, eh, tak kira lah. Uh, dengan bahan-bahan dia yang lain ke, consistency tu mesti ada. Sama ada dari segi penggunaan warna. I cerita dengan you at Asia last time, right? Merah putih je. So, it will uh, stick in people's head. You know, eh, tengok je macam tu. Oh, I know this company. You know, so you must have that consistency. Okay. Same goes. Okay, this is another example of consistency. Okay, we 